So that's the very interesting shops that they're selling abaya. That's abaya for winter, right? Oh. And you can see the skin there. It looks like sheep skin. So that's the very colorful uh, Syrian abayas. So the abaya is the traditional cloth for, uh, for women. Very beautiful. So that's for men. That's for female. And the inside is, is filled with wool. But that's artificial one. It's, it must be very, very warm, right? Yeah. Look at the beautiful, how beautiful it is. Really nice. So, and all these parts, actually it was wrong, all these parts is for the floor. Because you know the floor gets very cold in winter here. Because we are very high actually, Malula was 1500 meters high. Damascus is 1000 meters high. So it gets cold in winter. It was almost freezing last night actually. I guess that's a kind of rugs, carpets. Beautiful. So you can see they sell it by the side of the road. They have the guy has his uh, his small truck, and uh, he comes to sell his uh, his stuff by the side of the road. As you can see, there is another shop there and another one after. So uh, there are a lot of them on the, on the road. And now we have Abu Karim with the Abaya. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Good. This is Muhammad with the second Abaya. This is? Muhammad. His name is Muhammad. Ham Muhammad, okay. So people still wear it. Or, yeah. That's very nice. So these neighborhoods were abandoned basically, no? no nobody lives here anymore, right? I guess. Oh, yeah. oh my god. So we are here in Homs. So in the middle of a, of a neighborhood, you see that it was uh, completely ravaged by the civil war. But what interests us is this mosque here. This mosque is uh, is very important in Islam because it uh, it was it, before being a mosque, it was a cemetery, and in the cemetery you have the tomb of Khaled ibn al Wahid, who was one of the greatest war leaders of, uh, of Islam, of the expansion of Islam, actually. Like, but uh, like Rula explained to me that basically when, at first uh, Khaled did not want to convert to Islam, but when he finally accepted to, to convert to Islam, Mohammed was very, well, Mohammed, the, the main, the, the, greatest, the, the greatest prophet of Islam, Mohammed was very, um, very pleased because, because Khaled was, absolutely, was, was a great war leader. So then he, he went. Uh, he, he, he participated a lot in the in the in the expansion of Islam. He did not. He was not teaching Islam to people. He was he was not interested in that. But he was interested in the um, in being a war leader. And he was one of the people. He participated in the conquest of Damascus. And he came all the way to here, Holmes, where he died, and his son also uh, died, and he's buried next to him. So you have. Uh, so that's it. So basically, that's that's the the big thing of this mosque in here in Holmes. It's, uh, it's the mosque of the tomb of Khaled ibn al-Wahid. And it's, ex it's absolutely incredible. Because you have this mosque that was destroyed, actually, partly destroyed during the civil war. The domes were gone, but they rebuilt it. Uh, it was rebuilt, but as you can see, it's not the case for the neighborhood all around, which is still uh, completely destroyed, basically. That's insane, basically. This neighborhood is really... It's really shocking. It's like everything is destroyed, basically. 
Okay, so we're gonna continue our journey towards Aleppo. I think we're gonna go a little bit in the neighborhood and then resume to Aleppo. They're starting to come back because they, um, to pay the rent every month. They still pay the rent? Uh, no, if you, the ones who left and they have to pay rent every month for the, the new houses. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a lot yeah. Of money. So some it's say a, they'll come back. They will come back, yeah. To our own houses and we, so they don't have. Cheaper life, the life. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's if, also dangerous. If the house belongs to you and it's still in a good. Uh, yeah, if it's still kind of not falling. Yeah. Like the white one. Like yeah, the like, white like this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if it, I mean, if it's like that, yeah, okay. Yeah. But some, uh, uh, some buildings you cannot live anymore. It's uh, totally damaged. Yeah, there is a risk of. Uh, it needs to be rebuilt completely, yeah. Like, like this one, you cannot. It's impossible oh, to live. <clears throat> so why we are here out in this it's very weird to be in this neighborhood honestly you can see in the fifth floor here there are some people still living in this building wow it's really heartbreaking oh my god it's insane it's really it looks like the war was just uh, now you can see the minaret is barely standing there this building is uh, it's almost well, it's completely collapsing. That's insane. Wow. It's really heartbreaking. Look at that. It was burned, destroyed. Well, ah. I guess it testifies very well of the, the violence of the war here. I really don't know what to say, basically. Well, you can see there is a family living here. You can see the kids on the first floor. Oh, it's painful to be here, sorry, honestly. Okay, let's resume our journey to Aleppo, guys. So we are in Hamma now, in the city just after Homs, on the way to Aleppo. And look at what we have. <laughs> it's quite insane actually. We have this is, or this is a replica of what was the first water mills in the world. And, uh, and actually the Romans, so the, the first water mills were built here in Hamma. And basically what, what they would do is they, they would make a small narrow canal so the, the, the water comes at a, at a steady flow. And then they build this weird thing, which I will not explain how it is built, because uh, Rula explained to me, but it's a bit complicated the, the, the way it's, it's, it's built. It's built with different types of wood. So there is cedar wood on the outside, but they don't use cedar wood all the way because it's, uh, it's, it would be too heavy. And basically on the side, you see, you have like some straight things so, so that it turns. And there are some boxes also. And the boxes are made so that 
the water, when, 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 the, when, the, when the meal turns, the water gets inside the box. And when, it gets, when the box gets all the way up, then the water is thrown into the, into the canal. And so that's how you, you put the water in the canals. And that's how they can irrigate the land all around, all the lands around Hama to, for agriculture. So that's how since, and this system dates from like about 2000 years ago, from the times of, uh, of around the times of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and the Romans uh, copied from this system. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of crazy. So that's how they were managing their agriculture around here, to have like a all year round agriculture. Because winter there is rain, but in summer no rain, so they needed the system to bring water in the canals to irrigate and to have agriculture all year round. Wow. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? That's the story of Hamma here in the, in the center of Syria. Virginia? Huh? Eh? Hello. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry? France, I'm in France. Please. Huh? I mean, France. France. I mean, why? I mean, why? YouTube. YouTube. I keep going. Okay. If I can. I'm so good. YouTube. I'm so good. I don't understand. No. Where? Arabi. Is it up? Is it up? In France, yeah. I am in France. Eva TG. TG. Oh, Paris, Paris. I don't understand. They were restaurants.
Yeah, and here we are in the hotel in Aleppo. Finally, after a long day on the road from Damascus to Malula to Homs to Hamma and then from Hamma to Aleppo through an absolutely insane road, I would say. I would say. I would say that it was probably the most shocking thing I've seen in my life. That is from Hamma to Aleppo basically. Well you have seen it. You have seen part of it because then it was night. But it was all the town, all the villages, everything was deserted. It was only ghost towns, ghost cities, ghost villages. Absolutely insane. The violence of the to see this emptiness was absolutely insane, honestly. It's I was shocked. I mean sometimes you just want to cry when you see like that when you see that. It's just insane. The violence of all those houses lost, all those lives lost. All those people who lost if they didn't lose their life, they still lost everything their businesses, part of their families. And you see the emptiness. I mean, I've seen ghost towns before, but I've never seen like 100 kilometers of ghost towns. That's insane. And it's not over yet. I mean, at some point on the road from Hama to Aleppo, at some point you are like 20 kilometers or something like that from Idlib. And there are still fights in Idlib. Still fights between basically, I think it's the the rebels. Uh, so Turkey invaded a part of Syria, the Turkish army, and uh, and they kind of told the rebels that from what I understood they're gonna protect them, and so they're fighting basically between the rebels and the Turks, and the Turkish army are allied and they're fighting against the the government of Syria, which is allied with uh, Russia basically. So the war was still not still not far from here from Aleppo, maybe 50 kilometers. On the road at some point, you're at 20 or 30 kilometers. But just, it was just so shocking to me. The devastation is just insane, completely insane. I had the impression that I was riding through apocalypse, basically. It's just nonsense, basically. From, from a mind, who grew up and always lived in a peaceful environment, like me, you can't understand that. Basically, it's it's beyond your understanding. It's beyond my understanding. How can everything becomes completely destroyed? Just... Ciao, guys.